Okay, so I invite you now to take here the first moments, make yourself feel very comfortable, relaxed and at ease. Take a moment, grounding your sit bones, elongate your spine, shoulders up and back, softening all the muscles in the face. And then allow your body to just arrive, feel your body from the top to the bottom, bottom to the top. And if you encounter any tension, any tightness, you can use your exhale and invite these areas where you experience tension or tightness to soften and to release. Feel your whole body is completely relaxed and soft. And now we having prepared our body, now we will also prepare the mind by simply letting go of all thoughts, worries, concerns, all the plans, all the organization. And for this next 20, 30 minutes, Allow yourself to be fully present and here. Nothing to solve, to plan. Allow yourself to the gift of the present moment. Now the mind has also a bit more arrived in the space. It can also set our motivation for today, for this practice. And first of all, rejoice. Feel really happy about that you are made it here, that you are now trying to meditate. And this is what really matters. So <clears throat> sorry. mentally clap yourself on the shoulder. Feel happy that you engaging now in this practice. And within that joy and happiness now, we can set our motivation for this practice this morning by just acknowledging a moment, all the preciousness of this moment that we have an inside and body, kind of the healthy mind to practice. So, so many special causes and condition coming together, allowing us to work, how precious that is. So feeling happy about it, our own efforts and all the outer efforts. And we also gonna do this practice, not only for ourselves, we from the beginning making this practice uh, beneficial for all the world around us, for each and every sentient being. May all of them be benefactors of our practice this morning. Think that for a moment, let this motivation enter your heart. Take it with you in your day today. And now with this profound motivation, are we going to start a practice by just allowing ourselves to arrive with every breath. So just noticing your breath wherever you notice breath sensation throughout your body. And whenever your mind keeps wandering away from the breath, you just come back to the breath. You're riding your rhythm of life, fully aware of what is going on moment by moment. And every time you are distracted, you joyfully come back towards the breath sensation. And this we will do now for another three minutes. Just trying our best to stay with the breath sensations in silence. And whenever you are drifting off, you're noticing it and you come back to the breath again and again. So keep on practicing awareness of the present moment for the next three minutes fully there with your breath.
Now the mind is more calm, more settled. So we are perfectly now prepared to apply uh, practice now how to deal with anger. And this morning, it's a beautiful meditation, guided meditation inspired by Glenn Manson. And uh, yeah, it's all about anger. I think a topic which we all have in our day-to-day -day life quite often. The very good way how we can deal with anger is when we are applying antidotes to anger, we are not trying to suppress anger. That's very important. We rather try to look as an alternative, as a solution, as how to deal with that situation in a different way so that the anger can simply dissolve. So we can think of a situation. Um, yeah, and this I invite you now also, think of a situation where you got angry or frustrated when something didn't work out the way you had hoped for. And try to bring now the situation to your inner mind screen. And now if you have kind of faced the situation back, now you can ask yourself, could I have done something about that situation? So just ask yourself, in that situation where you were um, visualizing, where you remember, ask yourself, could I have done something about that situation? And here we really can see that if we can do something to change the situation, there is no need to get angry or frustrated. Then we can simply make the change, isn't it? And if there is nothing we can do because it's right outside of our control, then we nothing to change the situation. So what is the point to get angry at the situation in that moment? Just think about that for a moment. I think there's also this beautiful quote by Shanti Deva. Like, why you, uh, like, if there is a solution, apply the solution. If there is no solution, then why to get angry about the situation? So, can this apply to the last situation you had just visualized? Mm. Relieving. And then there is you now of next, I would like to invite you now to think of a situation where you got angry when someone has criticized you. And also try to bring the situation quite clearly to your mind. Last time when someone criticized you. Now you have that situation clearly in front of you. So now you can ask yourself, was there, was there criticism you got in that moment? Was it valid? Was it justified? Did this person or this group were right is to critique? if what they say was true when you get criticized. But if it was true, then why you get angry? 
because if we can see that maybe from a broader perspective, actually when someone criticizes us, it gives us the opportunity to grow. They are giving us the chance to correct our faults and improving ourselves further and further. Can you see that also in that situation? That it was a situation where we could grow, where we can learn, where we could learn. And if it was untrue what they said in that situation, since it's completely not the truth, it's wrong, then there is no reason to get angry about it. Can you see that? Can you get an insight from that understanding? That either if it's true, then there might be some shortcomings they helping us to grow. But if it's completely untrue, then also no reason to get angry because they are wrong. Then regardless of whether the criticism was valid or not, for of all, they gave us the opportunity to provide us to develop patience, one of the six perfections in Buddhism. And without enemies, without people criticizing us, without, yeah, people who may, or the world who is not running as we like them to be, there would be no chance to grow, to develop patience. So actually, they are very kind to us because through them, we have the opportunity to grow. Now we can go even one situation further now. I'd like to invite you to think of a situation where you get angry in a conflict with another person. So also bring this situation clearly to your inner mind screen. Just a recent situation, I guess, works very well if you can. And now instead of looking at that situation from only your perspective, now assume the perspective of the other person. So see if you are literally able now to get into the shoes of the other person and try now to imagine how would the situation look from their perspective. Can you do that? Just look at the situation from the other person's point of view. And here we want to try to understand their viewpoint so we can see that it's just like us. Because finally, whatever is their point of view, they also, they just like you, they want to be happy and they do not want to suffer but due to their confusion and disturbing emotions they are creating a lot of suffering for themselves and those around in that way like by distinguishing the person from their behavior we can actually begin to develop compassion for them. And if their behavior is inappropriate, we can address their bad behavior without attacking the person. Person, Can we separate the person and the deed? Can you make a distinguish between there was a wrong deed and a bad person because bad person does not exist. It's just a person driven by confusion, ignorance.
Now I want you to think of a situation where you often get irritated or frustrated. What makes you irritated easily? What brings out frustration in? And allow the situation of your recent frustration to just come up quite clearly so you have an idea of the situation. And now, instead of focusing on the situation, now see if you instead can look directly at your frustration and at your irritation. The feeling itself, not the circumstances, just the feeling itself. Don't try to push it away. Just be brave now and try, try to look at it directly. Almost like an impartial observer. What is the nature of your irritation or of your frustration? Is it something solid or concrete? Or is it something that continues to change? And what does frustration or irritation look like? Where can you find it? Where is it located? And we can see that if we simply look at the irritation or frustration directly at the feeling, it will simply dissolve, no? isn't it? Now think of a person who makes you irritated and bring them to your mind. And now try mentally to dissect this person. Try to pinpoint precisely in that person what it is from that person, what it makes it or what makes this person so irritating for you. Dissect it part by part. What is it that is so irritating about? Maybe there's something that they say. It's irritating a particular word they are using, but actually words are just sounds. So which particular sound is irritating? Or maybe it's some behavior, action that is irritating, or an action, a physical action they do, and it's simply... But even if it's a physical action, what is physical action? It's simply a movement of their body. So watch at that person, which particular movement of their body is irritating you? Or maybe it's their appearance that is irritating you. But also their appearance is, of course, simply made up of various colors and shapes, which your eyes perceive. So which particular color or shape is irritating? When we search in this way, we can see that it is our mind that is creating the irritating person by interpreting the situation in a specific way and then applying the label of irritating or annoying. And then we go on and mistakenly taking a concept of that person for the persons themselves. We see that person as inherently irritating, but in reality, it's not. Mm -hmm. 
and now see if you can, after all these contemplations, if you can come to your own conclusion. Just going one more time to all the experience of these last moments together. How do you look at anger now? And then as a conclusion for all of us, we can recognize that by engaging in these reflections more often and applying them to situations in our life when we are frustrated or when we are angry, we can clear up a lot of anger and frustration and we can develop a much more healthy way of looking at things in a much more real reality point of view and this will give a strong determination to work further and further on ourselves for the benefit of all sentient beings in that way don't get angry get creative i think that is beautiful words to say that way we can let go of all the thoughts and just for a few more moments again resting with the breath sensations just enjoying observing the rhythm of the breath and releasing all thoughts where is concerns and just being with the breath for a few more moments here in peace And now we can feel very happy, rejoicing in our own efforts. We worked together this morning, so beautiful, feeling happy, joyful about our practice and dedicating out all the positivity, the virtue of this practice. May all sentient beings be benefactors of this practice. May this practice serve as a cause of the development of the everlasting peace and happiness in this world.